result when they lost by one last year, but they come in, despite being held in Sydney, to this final as the favourites, because as you mentioned, they're undefeated, and when they met earlier in the rounds, they beat New South Wales handsomely. South Australia are strong in all thirds, but nowhere more so than up front with Natalie Avellino and Jenny Borlase, both Australian squad players. They have a young, fast pair in the midcourt and Sheridan Abbott and Nikki Washington. Of course, South Australia are fortunate to have Australian skipper Michelle Filkey at the helm with fellow national player Kath Harvey with her at wing defence today and Sarah Sutter back at goalkeeper, coach Julie Franco. Well, it's fair to say Margaret Corbett is still looking for the best effort from her side and she's had difficulty establishing a fluent combination. Starting goalers for the final, Katrina Wagg and Nicole Cusack. Captain Sue Kenny has missed out on a start with Mary Ann Murphy, Carissa Dalwood and Sharon Finnan making up the midcourt. Liz Ellis and Keely Devery are goal defence and goalkeeper. And the South Australian bench, Anne, has every reason for optimism and confidence today. I think so, and it's not just looking across the championships, it's across the whole year. If you remember, South Australia placed one and two in National League, and so they draw confidence from that. They've had a healthy representation of players in the national squads who've performed well throughout the year in international series. And of course, their run through the championships to date has been pretty impressive. Carissa Dalwood on the left, Keely Devery on the right. And Mary Ann Murphy, who comes on for Sue Kenny. Well, what a blow it must be for Sue, who must be wondering where she stands in, in her career now. Well, your heart goes out to her, particularly as skipper, not getting the start. And of course, more rests on it than just the outcome of the match, although that's a priority for the girls. You also have to acknowledge that the Australian team to contest next year's World Championships will be announced. And so in the back of the mind, there's that thought. But the moment it's uh, winning the nationals that would uh, rest more heavily on her mind and uh, I'm sure she'll play a very supportive role from the sideline. She's that nature and we still may see her enter the game. New South Wales has experimented with changes during the break, still looking for that connection. Sue Kenny went to Glasgow in 87, was part of the World Championship team in 91, although couldn't play in the final, of course, with that foot injury. So her career at that level, I'm sure she feels is incomplete. She'd like to win a World Championship and be in the, in the seven. And uh, she would love to go to Birmingham. Katrina Wagg, and some pressure on her today. She's been shooting around the low 60s, which may not be good enough today. Now, New South Wales has elected to sit her back a shooter to try and steady her game, have Cusack running the front. And I think we've seen improvement from her there, but as you say, the shooting across the whole season has uh, been below her best and she'll need it today. For New South Wales to beat this South Australian line, we need all seven absolutely firing. So South Australia in their semi-final defeated Queensland 57-47. New South Wales defeated Victoria 50-41. Uh, it was earlier in the week that we got uh, a worrying indication from New South Wales' point of view about what South Australia can do, and they whacked them 55-41, and Filkey did not play. Well, not just Filkey. Borlais was off the course, court also with a virus. Filkey was off the court. And uh, Harvey has been rested too. So they've really rested their main line. And it's really appeared on main court infrequently across the championship rounds. We see it though now in its entirety. Michelle Filkey just saying, could we have the bibs, please? We can't, can't go out without knowing uh, who we are. Well, we know who we are, but we've got to tell everybody else. Well, it's pretty tricky, but the umpires, I'm sure, would like to know who's allowed to run where. The other thing with the South Australian line, I, I guess like New South Wales, is the depth. Monica Dunn and a very tight wing defence that could well come on to the wing defence position and allow Harvey to join Filkey in the circle. So a few options there for them. And Marissa Romeo, their young shooter, been performing very well on top court. Member of the Australian under-21 team this year, but she's really held her own in open competition. And the players are about to be invited onto court. And across the two squads, you have 13 players who have represented Australia. So New South Wales and South Australia, certainly the dominant states in Australian netball. Borlase and Avellino, both from the Garble Club. Washington having left uh, contacts, haven't seen much of her this year, but she certainly performed well at these championships. Harvey and Filkey. And Sarah Sutter, who's had a very strong uh, tournament as well.
And Steve, that lineup, that South Australian team, uh, very strong through the late 70s and 80s, but not since 1983 have they seen an open national title. Is this the year? For New South Wales, Captain Sue Kenny. And the crowd will be surprised to see that Sue is not wearing a bib, and they'll realise that she's uh, on the bench at the start. What a tough, tough decision for um, Margaret Corbett. Keely Devery, of course, as vice captain, will assume captaincy responsibilities on court. But so tough a decision for Margaret Corbett to decide between these brilliant players. One with the drive, the other more the feeder. Katrina Wagg can be a nervous starter, but uh, she and Cusack can't afford too many early misses if they're to run with South Australia today. You really have to say that the South Australians are, are favoured. Interesting, Steve, that New South Wales elected to run their skipper out first, although not a starting member. And I think that's out of respect for what a brilliant player she is and years of service. We should also note, although New South Wales is chasing its eighth consecutive title, they won it also in 84, 85, then it was broken in 86 by Victoria, so they could well bar 86 be looking at many you, more consecutive years. You went a little bit off task, they tell me, that year, is it? Yes, it was all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Not you specifically, I meant, I meant your team. Anyway, here we go. Nikki Washington with the first centre pass for South Australia. Filky, Abbott. Great lead Washington. from Washington to slip inside Darwood and take top position on the circle. Well, that was, I was about to say, an important shot for Avellino and not one you dish off and Washington certainly didn't expect it. Finnan. Murphy being chased by Harvey and Harvey and Murphy we thought uh, before the match started and one of the key matchups of the day. I think that wing attack position crucial for New South Wales in both settling the pace also adding something unpredictable and the feed it's uh, crucial for them and a great start. They've turned it over from the centre. Well that was uh, an air ball really from Wag and Cusack in the right spot. I can't uh, give Katrina the credit for the pass. And uh, Harvey attracting the whistle early on. Two penalties against her, although that one comes out against Wag. We noted in the international series, Kath Harvey drawing a lot of attention from international umpires. And a big test for her to come through this game, clean in contest without too much whistle. I guess that'll be in the mind of uh, selectors as well, how Harvey can play, what, uh, whether she can adjust her style to what's required at the international level. Ball lays. And one apiece. Abbott leaves it for Harvey. Gets it back now. Oh, nice deception from Borlase in sensing that Avellino had driven base. But she doesn't settle on the first shot. And if I remember right, in last year's final, great start from them, but a little unsettled with the goals that count towards the end of that match. New South Wales, of course, coming away winners, but just by one. Contact against Sutter. Wag. And she's had two wayward shots to start. Avellino. Wing attack, contact. Murphy Bloody pink, Bloody Harvey Bloody on with it quickly. Avellino. Good position Bloody from Washington and strong to hold it, using the ball to steady herself, which of course Bloody is quite Bloody legal Bloody if Bloody the ball goes into Bloody offside Bloody area Bloody and not hands. South Australian bench, Michael Dine on the left there, Marissa Romeo. Murphy. Oh, well defended by South Australia, held it up, but Murphy playing a patient game. Oh, an easy intercept from Sutter, the pass oh, met the for Wag. And open through the midcourt for South Australia, the drive far too easy for Catherine Harvey. Yes, <laughs> Dalwood stood aground 
and Washington could do no more than fall into the circle. Well, I was expecting her to put the ball down again and steady herself before she dished it, but she must have decided there was a pass there to be had. Cusack gets the bounce pass from Dalwood. Inside, shuttle pass. And Cusack can take the shot. Shoot up, contact. And well, another Wag contact really against Wag. Just trying to turn herself to have a hold, and unfortunately you do need to bend elbows to jump and run. And a, a hard <laughs> fall for Sharon Finnan. She just winded, I hope nothing more than that. Finnan uh, tripping just towards the end of the lead. I couldn't quite catch then whether she tripped on her own feet or just in the contest, but it was a heavy fall. Tough cookie though, Sharon Finnan. Won't be down for long. No, she's up and fine. In fact, uh, I was wondering whether New South Wales would elect to run a, run a back line that had Finnan marking Avelina because that's always a contest to be cherished. Washington in space. Great work from Keely Devery. Just the touch to disrupt that pattern. Well, Devery would love a strong game here just to remind selectors that she's still around. Well, what a crowd on the transverse line. It was a party call. None of, none of them could step into the goal third. And Michelle Filkey out for contact. Barely has time to get out of play before she's sprinting back through to pick up Cusack. A lot of whistle in the first uh, four or so minutes. And not too many goals. Just 2-1. South Australia lead it. And we've had four and a half minutes of play. Cusack, 2-2. Two -two. Margaret Corbett in the middle there. Sue Kenny on the left. And Kirsten Cox on the right. Young player with a big future end. Yes, yeah, she's come straight from New South Wales under-19s up into open, missing the under-21 category. So a big learning curve for her. And, of course, this will be a world of experience. Ellis, Murphy, uh, Harvey right with her and draws the whistle again. Well, I'm trying to keep a mental check on the penalties on Harvey because they could well keep her out of the game. I'm up to four. Getting close to shifting hands. <laughs> I'll be mindful of uh, the three wise ladies sitting courtside, watching every move. Yeah. We're choosing the Australian team. And Wag will feel better for having a shot on the board. Filky broke. Dalwood up to the line quickly. Murphy. Harvey in her back. Murphy takes no nonsense from her. Cusack. Good start, New South Wales. Taking a while to settle. Avellino. Borlase putting the moves on. Comes back out to Washington. Every doing well to defend it from the side, but just that step forward broke the distance. Murphy. Oh, nearly an intercept from Filkey, and now she's got to hurry back. That's congested. Oh, good move, Cusack. Go, oh, and a good defence, Filkey. Good combination between the South Australian defenders. Sutter was working hard on the front position. Filkey sat back to cover the drop. And, of course, quite a bit of elevation there for both... Defenders. New South Wales throwing though as South Australia crosses the line. Play. Cusack Bunny. to Dalwood. Offside free pass. Cusack leaves it for Dalwood and that South Australian hands are down. No easy passes in this circle. Good understanding between Murphy and Wag, of course, who play for the same club in Sydney. South Wales five, South Australia three. And I don't think either side has yet settled into a rhythm, man. No, I really am sitting here waiting for that final quarter. <laughs> I'm sure they are too. Avellino, Devery in attendance. And Borlase was out when she slapped the ball. Avelino not in her rhythm. We saw it earlier with the young South Australian shooters unable to get their timing. Avelino three misses on the score sheet. No strokes yet. Dalwood. Cusack. Nice fake. 
Washington. Well, the fake was there, but unfortunately the other options were covered. It's a strong defensive game from both teams. Murphy. Oh, Sutter really working on WAG. I was sure that was going to draw a penalty. And Cusack will get to retake it. Nola Kalnan and Maureen Boyle, our umpires for this final. 6-3, New South Wales. I understand uh, I wasn't able to watch the round match between the two teams, but uh, the first seven minutes was solid, and after seven and a half, it fell apart for New South Wales. But this is a good start from them. Murphy whips it to Wag, who whips it back onto Dalwood. The speed of the pass is impressive, and Cusack steady to finish. I was able to come out on Wednesday night and watch that game before ducking off to Adelaide for the hockey, but it was 16-9 at quarter time for South Australia and 32-19 at half time. New South Wales won the third quarter, but only got it back to a difference of 11, and then South Australia won the last quarter, so 55-41 at full time. But, um, New South Wales really did look out of sorts. Couldn't find their way to the circle. And Apollino with uh, a minor injury problem. So there'll be a pause here while uh, that's sorted out. A finger or a hand injury. She really hasn't found her stride in the game. Uh, whether that's influenced a shot or not, I can't tell you. But a uh, couple of misses in goals. Seven turnovers, each of them caused by uh, an umpiring decision against Catherine Harvey would also be a worry that she's not able to contest and stay in the game. Six minutes left first quarter and that score line would be a surprise to most who've been at the, here at the tournament all week Murphy wag that was nice work from Harvey got the better of Murphy that time and Murphy will run all day she's super fit and fast so Harvey and Murphy the contest to watch oh good work from Finnan Nice advantage played by Maureen Boyle there after the contact. Avelina still can't drop it. Well attack. And a call against her as well. Contact on uh, Liz Ellis. Murphy now. Wag. Offside. Washington offside. Cusack. <laughs> Cleanly through. Cusack, perfect technique. It's a lovely high trajectory with which uh, Cusack shoots. She shot 73% against South Australia on Wednesday, 77% against the Victorians in the semi. And six from six in the opening of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Harvey. Washington. Avellino allows it to bounce and shields it. <laughs> Much needed one for SA. New South Wales centre pass. Dalwood steps in to take it. First break. A break from South Australia. Not the first time either. Murphy. And again we see the use of Murphy in uh, getting an approach to Katrina Wagg. He's far more comfortable in goals. Four from five is her opening. And won't New South Wales be pleased to see that as South Australia create an unforced error and give New South Wales a chance to take it to seven. Contact, wing defence, Harvey being pinged again. Bounty's offside. Cusack. Contact, wing attack, penalty. Against Murphy. And uh, Harvey will be pleased to hear that. Phil Key. Washington. Harvey. Tough decision for Julie Franco as we look at just three minutes, 30 seconds left in this first quarter. Do you make the brave decision to make the change now or allow players to settle knowing that Harvey isn't in swing, nor is Avellino? Body's contact, contact, wing defender. And Ellis eats that one. What a wonderful anticipation. It's a brilliant play, Liz Ellis. As Sutter tries the same and forces uh, the throw in 
This is an important play for South Australia. They really need to peg it back to five and then just work it to grind away. Filky, Sutter, he's in the full width of the court, South Australia, as they look to bring it up. Harvey, Abbott to Borlase, to Washington. Well, the Abilene. space was behind it. Oh. Ellis, but the pass was uh, slow enough to allow Ellis to get back and get good position. Contact against Devery. Borlase with the shot, and they've got it back to five. <laughs> Borlase, as you mentioned earlier, only played the one quarter against uh, New South Wales, and she shot 64% there, 77% against Queensland in the semi. Filky, Harvey. Easy interception for Finnan. So Harvey, oh, Avellino makes up for a teammate's error. Contact. contact against Finnan. Of the ball. Short pass. Short pass, call from Maureen Boyle. Not room for another player to pass between. Wag. Dalbert. Murphy looks for Wag, bounces to Cusack. Wag, good aerial skills. Sutter a match for a height wise, but maybe Wag can get up a little higher. Wag at 182 centimetres, Sutter 183. South Australia really blowing their chance. They could have had that turnover plus the next centre and have brought it to within three. With uh, just over a minute remaining, that would have been quite respectable given that it hasn't been their best performance. I worry for you when you put in such good netball to think your best isn't coming when it counts. Washington to Avellino. Smart pass for Borlase. Time enough for another goal here. Clock stopped at a minute out from the break. Oh, that was a tough pass from Murphy to Wag, though. Just settle, says Katrina Wag. And blow it here. But here's a chance for South Australia to just knock something off the margin. New South Wales will be looking to slow it here. Avellino. A good one, too, with Washington. Well, that's quick play from South Australia. They weren't prepared to wait for Finnan to get out of play because they knew there was little time on the clock. And they'll be pushing this centre through, trying to find uh, their shooter as quickly as they can. Ball A's, tempted to shoot from long range. Timekeeper's up now. That's a good interception. Margin at four. Poor decision then from Ball A's. She should have elected the shot. As a result, they've lost the goal for the diff. Well, an interesting first quarter, and not one that uh, many would have been expecting. Certainly one that New South Wales would have been hoping for. And 11-7 uh, at, at the break. And uh, what have uh, South Australia got to do? Well, we've really got to get, from their point of view, Catherine Harvey involved in the game. She spent more time out of play than she has on court. Also, too, the confidence in their shooters. I don't really think we're getting a great deal from Nat Avellino in the opening stages of the game. Liz Ellis talking with Margaret Corbett. And she has to be pleased. She should be very pleased, particularly with the defensive effort. They've really closed the spaces down on the South Australian shooters and they've been good over the shot, forcing that hesitancy and the misses from Avelino. Across to Julie Franco. It's okay, it's only a few pressures. You can hear the composure in that South Australian camp. Their call was, we'll just grab a couple back in this next quarter. We've only made a few mistakes, it's still there. We've got a long time to play. So they're just gonna try and grind away at that opening lead and hope that it comes for them at the right end of the game. Short toe for somebody. It's an ugly sight, Steve, isn't it? That's Nicole Cusack. <laughs> Nicole Cusack, one of the worst in the competition for um, blisters, and uh, she virtually has no soles left to her feet. They've been dressing them each night. She's down through a few layers of skin, and it's quite a common problem 
within the sport in terms of the speed at which they work and uh, the court surface. And you see, if, uh, a lot of them took their socks off. It's a pretty unpleasant thing to look at. <laughs> well, they play through pain. They play a lot of netball. And I guess they've, uh, a lot of them are playing through niggling injuries as well. But that's true of uh, most elite sports people. Just uh, learn to play through these uh, little problems. Big turnaround when you consider their previous match when South Australia led 16-9 at quarter time. This time it's New South Wales up 11-7. And don't the stats tell a story, particularly for Nat Avellino, two from six. She's well down there at 33% in her opening quarter. Jenny Borle is by contrast 100%, so they'll be trying to go through her until Avellino finds her rhythm. New South Wales, though, looking good. Katrina Wagg having a solid opening with five from seven. Nikki Cusack, uh, immaculate, with six from six at 100%. Players out before the time was up, which uh, doesn't happen too often. Now, through uh, the Nationals, they've been uh, getting players on court with a warning that there's 30 seconds left in the, in the rest period. So if you jump when the warning comes out, you are out there too soon. Avellino, the early contact. Ellis. Cusack. Wag. Gets rid of Sutter and Cusack drives to the post. Well, where was this form from New South Wales earlier in the competition? Mind you, it's not uh, an unfamiliar story for them at Nationals. No, traditionally New South are slow starters in the competition. Mind you, they had a great opening against Queensland and I think it worried them a bit <laughs> that they were putting it out early. There have been eyes to this final for so long. There's been touches of boxing preparation, touching touches of Aussie rules, simply to have the strength and the fight for this game against South Australia. So this is the one they've played for. And it looks like it's coming through with the goods so far in the game. Finnan, Wag. Dalwood receives a well-weighted pass. Murphy, contact against Harvey. And bounced in for Wag. Good shot, a lot of pressure from Filpi over the side, over the shooting arm. Against Finnan. Washington. Oh, nice drop from Matt Avellino. Really dragged Ellis along the baseline and then whipped back on her. A delightful move. She's just off camera, but you see the brakes being applied by Nat Avellino and a lovely stretch for the take. Ellis, Dalwood, Wag, all oh, bunched up a little on this side. Now Wag makes the break, and Murphy, well, she needed someone 10 feet tall to catch that. New South need Marianne Murphy to stay composed and to really be deliberate in that final feed because a couple of wild ones really gives the other team a sense of uh, a role. So here's an opportunity for South Australia to do something about the deficit. Borlais. Well, isn't she steady under pressure? Borlais and Cusack proving why in the last uh, year or so they've really found their way as uh, mainliners in the Aussie team. So the difference back to three and South Australia in possession. Finnan on the deck too. Avellino will be looking for a strong game here and she's got to consider herself a chance for that uh, Australian 12. Well, she's been fringed for a couple of years and in the squad. Cracked a look last year, oh sorry, during this year. Uh, the start won't have helped her cause, but maybe if she can run at home, it's a chance. Avellino with the shot. Wag. New South Wales looking for Steadier. That's not it. Cusack went the wrong way. Well, the pass did. And Between again, them, Murphy just a little unsettled in that final delivery. Momentum building from South Australia. And Avellino has come out with some fresh timing. Just working the end of the move beautifully. A applauds the teammates for this build-up. Harvey, great drive from Abbott, puts it across, gives the shooters time by that swing to Washington and doesn't Avellino hit the base well. Here she is again for the equaliser. Contact 
contact. And Ellis has given up the inside. contact inside the circle. So Borle is just taking a time. Now it's 13 all. And that's why. So Julie Franco electing to let her starting seven have more time and settle into the game. It would appear to be paying dividends. And as the quarter goes on, Margaret Corbett faced with the tough decisions of whether to change and who. 6-2, South Australia lead this quarter. Julie Franco, all right. I'm going to see too much emotion yeah, from that always, face. Oh, well, she's hands to the head now. Well, Didn't she's like normally the... very composed and very hard to get a smile out of. Didn't like the call, however. Have to take the good with the bad. Good stretch from Abbott. Cross court to Harvey. Avellino. Abbott. Well, he's working that front position really hard on Devery. The combination Ellis and Devery. Oh, nearly a held ball from Finnan. Cusack leads out. Dalwood, Wag offering high. Contact. And the contact against Filky. Cusack will not step in. Thought she might. So she's pretty comfortable from any range. Cusack, an important shot. She puts it up high. And it's a two goal lead for New South Wales. Gee, the, uh, after Vicky Wilson, it's a real lottery to uh, pick the shooters and uh, goalers in the Australian team. I think uh, Borlase and Cusack have both proven themselves in the colours. Nice move from Cusack along the base. Just watch uh, the neatness of Nikki Cusack at the end of this move. Gives it time, feeds it back. Wag picks her up on the move along the base. New South Wales have Got the better of another turnover. Contact against Harvey, surely. Oh, no. Interesting call. Harvey was up first. One-handed possession, and it was Murphy that went on with the contest. You don't often see the call read that way, though, but I'd say that's a great call from Maureen Boyle. Stand corrected. <laughs> the sit corrected in this case. That was uh, out of her hands, and again, right in front of the umpire, but I think uh, it wasn't Maureen Boyle's call. The call would have come from the other side of the court. Murphy, Cusack. Must be very hard for an umpire sometime when they see that happen on their sideline, but the call belongs to the other umpire, not to whip the whistle out anyway. Sutter. Fulke. Harvey left alone. And the contact in the middle of the court against New South Wales. So it's the Blues out by three. They settled after the run from South Australia. 7.55 on the clock, second quarter. Hey. Avellino stuck out of the circle for the moment. Now she's in. Nice hold from Borlais. The feed was good from Abbott. Into the free space behind Devery. Ellis out of play now. And a simple finish. Dalwood, Cusack, oh, and the hesitation from Murphy. Margaret Corbett must be starting to think, do I switch the wing? Do I keep Murphy out there? Harvey having a more comfortable second quarter, not drawing as much whistle, finding a bit of space for herself. Must be comforting for South Australia to consider that they're starting to find their timing and that they seem to run better towards this end, which will be their final end in the match. Ball A's. This to make the difference one. Thought about it. <laughs> Just dribbled in. Harvey looks a different player out there. Much more confident, comfortable. Abbott. Ray for Avelina to let that dribble along the ground. And they've drawn level again. It's looming as uh, a match for the under-21s final between South Australia and Victoria, which went goal for goal until the last quarter. 
Cusack. Steadier for New South Wales. Six minutes left, second quarter. Avellino deep to the corner for Washington. Two back on ball A's. New South Wales defence electing to team up on whichever shooter remains in the circle, but a contact call. That was an interesting one because uh, Washington ended up with her hands down in the circle, but it went against her. Pushing back against Dalwood, said Nola Kalman. Body language would have suggested otherwise. Players don't uh, try and uh, fake the umpire out, do they? Milk, milk a penalty, absolutely not. Murphy. Wag. Oh, great effort, Cusack. Wag gets the second attempt. Well, that was good pressure from Sutter, although I felt the hand was actually on the ball. And that goes against Wag, and I don't think I need to tell you the reaction to that call. And Dalwood makes her own challenge, uh, perhaps in answer to the, to the call that went against a teammate. Harvey. Contact. Wing attack. A lot Help. of whistle in this uh, passage of play. It's been halted with every release. Ball A's, Avellino. Oh, that was close to an obstruction. The arm just up prematurely before distance taken by Ellis. This one for an equaliser. Avelino far more comfortable in goals in the second quarter. She's put up five from seven. Contact. Win the it hasn't been one against Harvey for a while, but uh, that one comes. Sutter just a touch late on the challenge. Dropped short. As soon as it left her hands, we knew that it wasn't going there. Wag disappointed in herself. She'll pull out a defensive effort now. Harvey to Filkey against Murphy. Murphy having a go at that before she was really up in the air on line to the ball. And uh, it's dangerous play when the other player's up in the air. Contact on the ball, shot across. Ellis chasing the ball around Avellino. Devery. Avellino wins that one. Just sat back and had a look and let them do the hard work, didn't she? Ball lays in with a touch. That'll be a penalty. Wasn't strong, but she was up there. And again, the crowd lets Nola Stuffed Kalman... Stuffed by Ellis. <laughs> Technical term. Yes, the stuff block. I know what you mean. <laughs> Something out of volleyball, is it? <laughs> Great work from the uh, New South Wales uh, circle. Obstruction against Abbott. Dalwood. Wag leading out. Cusack along the base. Oh, and against Sutter. Wag. We can see that coming. I think Wag would prefer Cusack to take the close-in shots. Which is a worrying thing this early in the match. Oh, open baseline. Delightful move, the timing picked up from Avellino. It's running goal for goal with the centres. Two and a quarter minutes left until half time. Just nothing in this. Cusack. Wag out to Murphy. Harvey oh, doesn't it. touch from Harvey. She was almost unsighted for a moment as she turned the head to, to check the roll from Dalwood, but she ended up in the right place. the advantage there too but doesn't matter New South Wales play on Wag again nice baseline move for New South Wag doing well to keep the heels in the air and not grounding out of court ball A's Again, good positioning from Avellino on the rebound. She's not contesting it in the air. She's just using the hold. Debrian Ellis after everything. I think Borlase's last 
three or four shots have been booed. And again, the turnover. I'm sure the crowd not booing her in particular, but the, no, uh, the, the decisions <laughs> that are favouring it. And she hasn't made the last couple of penalties pay. New South Wales no, by one, off. inside the last minute of the second quarter. What a second half we're in for. Dalwood, Cusack. Wag. Contact, wing defender. Sutter not fooled by the fake. It was a fairly wide wipe, wasn't it? <laughs> Contact outside. Dalwood. Keeper laying on. Pass or shot. Sutter leaning back as she tried to hold space on Wag. That one drops for her. And it's a New South Wales centre pass. Chance for them to take it out to three. No sign of the timekeeper out of the chair just yet. Well, it's not for the faint-hearted. Now the timekeeper's up, though. Players will be aware. Wag has got to take it reasonably quickly. Sutter brings it down. Harby. Now look to the circle. And time is blown in that excitement. It was hard to hear it. The players didn't. But... South Australia have trimmed a four-goal deficit at quarter time to two, setting it up for a great second half here at the State Sports Centre in Homebush. At half time, New South Wales 20, South Australia 18. And we'll be back for the second half very shortly. In tennis, Boris Becker has qualified for tomorrow's final of the Australian Indoor Championships in Sydney, defeating Mark Woodford today in straight sets in the semi-finals. With the details, here's Judith Cohen. Becker and Woodford had previously met only once in August at the LA Open. There, Becker defeated the Aussie in the final in straight sets, but Woodford was determined that today's result would be different. Whilst Becker was relying on his booming serve, Woodford's counter-attack was his excellent return. Boom Boom firing early. Play went to serve for much of the first set, the Aussie troubling the favoured German with some handy network. But the number two seed had plenty of answers. Both players pleasing the crowd with some vintage tennis. Taken to a tie-break, both players scrambling for every point. Becker taking out the set in his trademark fashion. Beginning the second the way he finished the first, the German went into overdrive. A rattled Woodford had no answers as the big hitting German raced to a 5 0 lead. The Aussie surrendering to the might of the informed Becker. Bow to the master. Woodford taking only one game as Becker took one step closer to his third Australian indoor title. Oh, what a way to finish! And Becker will meet the winner of tonight's semi-final between Australian Patrick Rafter and the big-hitting Dutchman Richard Krajicek. In the double semi-final being played at the moment, the two Woodies are very close to victory. A short time ago, they'd taken the first set 6-2 and in the second are leading 5-3. In cricket, Australia is poised to have their first win, test win, in Pakistan in 35 years. Forced to follow on, the home side were dismissed for 260 in their first innings and a short time ago were 1 for 84, still trailing Australia by 100. In the contest and uh, learning plenty about netball, I'm sure, from Margaret Putris, president of the All-Australian Netball Association in New South Wales. Well, I wonder if they were a little shaken by that mini comeback from South Australia in that second quarter. The South Australians winning it 11-9, pulling a four-goal difference back to two. South Australia making a change to their centre. There's now Danny Grant. Mickey Washington is off. And the umpires now ready to resume. So there's Danny Grant. A very useful centre court player. And a look at the stats shows you that New South Wales very much on target through Nicole Cusack, four from four. She's continued on 100% for the half, incidentally, not just that quarter. Katrina Wagg, five from eight at 62% in that second quarter. South Australia, by comparison, have just dropped their stats. 
through Jenny Borlay. She's dropped down to 60%. Avelino has lifted to 62%, but interestingly enough, she's only on 50% for the first half. So compare her to Cusack, and you see maybe a, a, a reason why New South Wales just has her nose in front. Bit of body language from Borlay's on her first shot, and 19-20 now. Murphy. A steal from Harvey. And we don't need to remind people how important that third quarter is in uh, tilting a game. Avellino. Touch from Dalwood. Play. Contact wing defense. Contact goes against Finnan. Had a piece of it, not enough out. to satisfy Maureen Boyle. Hold time, please. And... What's happened to Liz Ellis? Well, she's had problems with her back uh, all week. Well, she's uh, had a back injury for as long as I can remember. She's had to uh, live with it ever since the days of the Institute of Sport. Comes and goes. And I think she just uh, collected uh, some rough treatment from Borlays, which wouldn't help. Grace Bryant and Leanne McKilsa out there to... Uh, Make sure she's okay. And the South Australians gather around. Scored the only goal so far in the third quarter. Queensland earlier in the day defeated Victoria to finish up uh, in third place with a 51-49 win. That was a little bit of a surprise. They'd be very pleased with that. They, of course, had eyes to the title and they've come close in the last few years uh, to wins against the big guns. Haven't yet made the final. <laughs> Those shots hard to shoot when there's been a break and you step out and you're the focus, but uh, that one is to equalise. And it's the South Australian centre pass. Grant takes it. Ball lays now. The defence from Dalwood. It's really important to drive through on those uh, corners. Otherwise, the swing goes into the shooters too easily. Ball lays. Good rebound from her. This one to hit the front. And South Australia have scored the first three goals to wipe out the deficit and take the lead. Wag. It's gone South Australia's way by the look. I yes. can't read that myself. Harvey, Grant, Abbott. South Australia more confident, confident through that middle third. You can just see the freeing of their drive. Ellis working hard to work across the side and block that run. But sometimes when you stick one leg out in front of another, one gets stuck. Avelino steps it in to shorten the distance. And it's South Australia by two. It's a brave pass from Filky, well taken by Abbott. Avelino. Well, that put Abbott under a fair bit of pressure. Well, she hesitated on the drive. She wasn't confident to take it to the corner on the first, so Avelino got the stutters holding it up for her. Sometimes you're better to go with your initial instinct and uh, pull through a strong move. Wag, Cusack leads away from Filky, and a good stretch from Wag. Likes to plant the feet wide. Cusack was out when she touched it back in. That's New South's first attempt of this third quarter. It's been one-way traffic for SA. Avellino. And she's coming through with the goods as the game uh, builds. Really, really slow start from her, but watch her now. They swing it, double play with Abbott. Avellino now confident to the post, and uh, that one's sweet. Cusack, wag. Oh, didn't think she was out. Had eyes on her feet, however. Kalnan. Oh, no, Kalnan a bit closer than me. Sutter, troubled by an ankle. Harvey. Hauled in by Avellino, but uh, couldn't control the offload. 
New South Wales drive it out through Devery and Dalwood. Finnan. Hesitation has driven Murphy right down to the defensive transverse line. She's ample speed to get back, but it really does suck up the attack line. Call against Danny Grant. <laughs> well done, Wag. She knew that she had Filky working the back of the move, so that Cusack must have been free behind that, so the quick hands made good use of it. Nearly four and a half minutes before Australia, uh, New South Wales. How did that slip out? New South Wales uh, score their first goal, third quarter. You're preempting the Australian announcement. No, not at all. Footwork against Avellino. South Australia had the opportunity to build the lead to about four, but they just haven't been able to do it. New South Wales just not prepared to let it go. They've had a good start, and they're in for the long haul. Cusack. Back out to Delwood. Good vision as Filkey uh, connects with Cusack as she offloads the ball. That's against Sutter. Cusack again. Even though Filkey knew that was coming. The pass was just right for Nicole Cusack. And one is the difference. And again, the whistle comes out on Catherine Harvey. It would seem that it's far more prominent at one end of the court than the other. I guess it's reassuring for them they'll run it home the other way. But neither coach in a position to feel uh, comfortable yet. Wag. Oh, it dribbled in. <laughs> At least you can smile about the reluctance of that goal. Good work. The pressure was from Finn and the backup from Debry. The crowd comes alive. I think we know where their allegiance lies. Well, they shouldn't be surprised with the, the match being played in Sydney. Wag again. Better shot. To hit the back of the ring and in. A little more on it. A little more confidence. And it's New South Wales. By the one. Murphy. Cusack. And Harvey can't believe it. Throws Australian. their hands up in, uh, in anguish. And their bench shaking their heads. They felt that was a fair contest. And now they're made to pay with another goal on the New South Wales scoreline. Abbott. Ball lays. Grant. They swing it wide. Uh, no shooters able to be found. Avellino had the baseline run. She's at now working as another feeder. New South Wales really shutting down the spaces on the South Australian attack line. Ellis still, I think, not getting up as high as she might. She's, I'm sure, troubled by the back. Nevertheless, that was a good rebound. Cusack. New South Wales by two. Seven and a half minutes into the third quarter. Well, that's a costly obstruction to find Sutter so far away from the goal. Wag. And she's shooting better. Coming through with the goods, four from five in this quarter. Dalwood to Cusack. Wag and Sutter having a good tussle. Wag strong in the air. Sutter looks at the umpire. Where was the help? I thought she was unlucky then. I thought she had good position. So did she. 27-23. <laughs> oh. Abbott to Borlais. Obstruction against Sharon Finnan. Avellino. Well, the last few shots for South Australia have been short. Just when they need uh, to keep in the game. Where they've run riot in other matches, they've been found lacking in consistency. And this is the big game. 
Well, that fell kindly for New South Wales after a near interception. Dalwood. Oh, no. Won't get to it. It's off whom? South off, Australia. Off Danny Grant. Quick hands from Murphy. Test for Wag. And off you hear the call. Well, Sutter really sat back from that shot and uh, made Wag commit to it. Contact against Murphy. Call goes for Harvey at last. Well, Murphy closing the space off on Danny Grant and uh, she's gone for causing a contact. That means shutting down on the space on a player who had uh, no vision that you were going to jump in her pathway. Avellino. Oh, drills the pass at Borlase. Five minutes left, third quarter, New South Wales by four. That's against Avellino, put the drive on and through the defender. So Avellino and Borlase both out of play as Devery takes it now. Ellis to Murphy, to Wag. And again, good spread from Wag, but uh, looking for Cusack when a more confident shooter might have had a go herself. Here she is again, though. It was good work from Ellis. Harvey had the drive on. Ellis knew she'd moved on from her grounded foot, so she held hard on the block. A better um, shot from Wag. Harvey on the drive. Ellis holds a distance from the landed foot, pulls in the intercept, and they'll make it pay with this goal. So an important intercept from Ellis. And Cusack has just popped in another. And New South Wales with a six-goal lead. But, uh, this is when South Australia could be most dangerous. As Another break approaches and they're down by half a dozen. Just as likely to wipe out three or four of those and set it up for a thrilling last quarter. Marianne Murphy has given away the penalty and uh, she's made the odd feeding error, but she's been tough. And she's really run at the South Australian line, which is something New South Wales needed to do. Mistake from Dalwood. All those leads out. Avellino at the base. Leaves it for Grant. Quick, Quick hands from Avellino. It was lovely to see that out. So loose out of the fingers. Rowing, New South. Avellino would like us to think she was uh, belted off the court. Maureen Boyle won't have any of it. South Australia again not comfortable in goals and the ones that should drop that are match winners, they're just not falling. Finnan, Dalwood, Wag. Sometimes the running from New South Wales doesn't look that organised, but their passing has been pretty good. They let me down there, Sutter. Good work from the Sutter sets. and back up from Grant. This is an important passage for South Australia. They need to find their shooters in good distance and a settling shot, and it's not to be. Off the fingertips of Sheridan Abbott. Keely Debbie to bring it in. Ellis. Murphy. Wag. Filky was reading Bad Cusack pretty well. Oh, and a hold against Filky. Cusack at very close range, and this will be goal number 30 for New South Wales. <laughs> Kenny, Raylene Mullaney, Catherine Cox there. New South Wales looking pretty comfortable. I know South Australia can pull it out, but uh, it's going to be tough for them. Two minutes left till three-quarter time. Five the difference. Dalwood up for Cusack. Will the change of ends be worth uh, three or four goals to South Australia? Contact goalkeeper, shot or pass. Also wonder whether they've gained from the introduction of Danny Grant to the middle. That may be a costly miss for New South Wales. Grant. Harby. Oh, Avellino got away from Keely Devery that time. And a contact against Borlay. So New South Wales let off the hook. 
ring attack forcing goal food. Finn into Wag. Minute to go, third quarter. Dalwood. Kiyazak. <laughs> Murphy diving into the circle, tripping up Filkey. And Noel at Kalnan says, let's stop the clock. And that's at the top of the circle. We see uh, Murphy dive to try and get a touch and take Filkey with her. Filkey, Abbott, Borlase. With not much time on the clock, they need to organise quickly and get a shot up. Oh, not dropping for her. The last few have been short. Polino to Abbott and back. Plenty of time for this shot. Well, that's costly for South Australia. They'd be in this game running goal for goal, bar for the misses in this match, in this third quarter. It's all oh, heavy fall for Marianne Murphy. Really had her feet taken from under her. Wing attack, She's made of tough stuff. And Murphy up in the air, but uh, unable to hold space with the challenge from Harvey. And Murphy will make sure she's okay before bothering to get up. Julie Franco. I wonder if she'll think about a change at uh, three-quarter time. She got on the bench. Well, I wonder if Marissa Romeo may be invited to come on and join the goal circle. Avelino and Borle's out there, far more experienced. Well, Romeo's out the back warming up. I don't think they'll lose from the transfer. avelino has been patching the goals, and whilst we've seen some lovely touches from her, we haven't seen the consistency or the ability under pressure to nail it. Well, surprising uh, comeback from New South Wales when South Australia looked to be getting a run on. And, in fact, New South Wales end up winning that third quarter by... 10 goals to 7. And they've stretched a two-goal lead to 5. And so it's all ahead of uh, South Australia in the final quarter when they began the match as, as hot favourites. Let's see if we can hear what Julie Franco and Michelle Filkey have to say. Ball lays an Avelino to change. Well, that's, that's a change, Anne, we often saw during the Super League. That's right, I'm just checking to see whether we're going to lose one of them or whether they're just switching positions. We've got Borlase moving up front to goal attack. Avelino going back to sit in the circle as shooter. Like, uh, Monica Dynan is stripping off. Uh, is she going to come on? Margaret, Margaret Corbett. And New South Wales will just be running at home from here. They're well familiar with playing them either way. And as I was thinking, the circle for South Australia is going to swing. Harvey's going to run the front. Fuki will run at uh, keeper. And I think Monica Dynan looks like she's coming on at wing defence. So it's uh, going for break for South Australia. Fuki, of course, there to sit at the back and have a good look. Avelino is sitting on 42% for the match. They're just trying to get a fix on their positional changes too. <laughs> Manager has to write it down and hand it into the bench. There's a lot of paperwork there. Yeah. Well, some concerned looks, I think, on the South Australian faces there. Well, a worrying time for Julie Franco. They're past her now. She just can send them out and hope they can run it in. Margaret Corbett must be pleased with the courage of her players looking for all the world like they were going to go down to South Australia but for three quarters of a the match they've been up there can they run it in? So it's 30-25 New South Wales in front and they prove the pundits wrong Carissa Dalwood waits for the umpires to be ready and for a ball to be given to her or will it be Danny Grant I've lost track of the centre passes 
Ben Davey, the uh, South Australian manager, goes back to the bench, having told everyone of the changes. So Dynan at wing defence, Harby at goal defence, Filky back to goalkeeper, and it's Sutter who's been benched. Grant's centre pass. Tough time for Monica Dynan to come on. Ball, ball A's. And if we look at the stats for New South, six from nine for Katrina Wagg, 66%. Nikki Cusack, four from five, 80% for that third quarter, but only one miss in the match to date. South Australia, Jenny Borle is sitting at 66%, which is well below her normal average of up in the 80s. And Nat Avellino, 3 from 7, 42%. Her stats will be very low in this game. We'll see if their positional switch can uh, boost the rate. South Australia then with the first goal of the last quarter. Great shot from Cusack. Would have got to retake it if, uh, if needed. Abbott, cross to Avellino. Grant, ball A's, no. Well, New South Wales touch on that. That's why she let it go. Oh, I didn't see it. Contact against Finnan. Grant uh, going to the floor. Will the New South Wales uh, Circle defenders get the same amount of whistle as the South Murphy, Australians did in the previous quarter. Murphy pushing through on that, using the elbow to get a drive going, but Maureen Boyle sees it. Chance for a turnover for South. Harvey, Abbott, Abellino. Players running everywhere, lots of offers. Oh, well done, Lizzie Ellis. Probably not off the ground as much as she normally is, but the anticipation of the stretch is just enough. Cusack a long way from home. Finnan. Contact, wing defender. Against Dynan. Murphy takes it. Dynan, quick hands. That one's against Wag. Dynan uh, proving the substitution change then. and picked up for the contact on Abbott. Oh, over the top of Ellis is Brave. They see that as an Ellis take. Brave call from Nola Kalnan. The South Australian fans let her know. 31-27, 12 minutes out from full time. Harvey's rebound, Dynan. So they'll lose no drive from Catherine Harvey swinging to goal defence. What they're hoping is Filky's brilliance from the back can come out and disrupt attack, read the play, pick off a few from the base. And this to put South Australia in much closer range. So the difference just three. Dynan, Grant. Ball lays to trim it to two. Contact. Back comes South Australia. Well, would have been a brave person to write them off at three quarter time. Pressure ticker. <laughs> Actually, I'd, uh, I'd just about back them in from here, South Australia, the way they've started this final quarter. They want it so badly. Uh, Filky says she's waited a decade to win a national championship. Well, although she must have been very proud to win the Super League uh, last year and, uh, and, that and then the disputed final this year, I'm sure uh, the national title is what she's really after. I'm sure it is, but I guess New South Wales' position would be if you've waited a decade, you can wait another 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> Avellino. I just think people have been waiting all week for this one match between these two teams and there hasn't been another thought in people's minds 
This is the Battle Royale. And here's a turnover. And you might be right. I was watching a similar game uh, a day or so ago, Steve. 1991 World Championship final. And you and I said the same things. They may be tired, but can we get through it? <laughs> South Australian centre. Won the difference, just under 10 minutes to go. Grant, Harvey, Abbott, Avellino. Grant again, looking for ball A's. Elbow on the lead move. Dalwood. I guess there are some South Australian fans here because you can hear them uh, decrying that call. Oh, Filky's so close. But of course, she's left the base open gone for the top and sacrificed it but the rebound they're the ones New South Wales needs to pin Wags got to finish for the Blues Grant Filkey Harvey now New South Wales trying to get over every pass Harvey now it opens up for the South Australians ball A's Ellis throwing literally everything into it this to equalize Borlaes has run four straight since she's come out at goal attack, looking far more comfortable. Avellino two straight, no misses for South Australia when it counts. Dalwood to Wag. South Australia. Well, I think South Australia will be trying to make Wag shoot. Double team Cusack. Oh, touch from Harvey. Royal says she uses the elbow on the way up. I thought that was a fair go at it. Grant takes it quickly. Avelino, you'd think there was only a minute left. The urgency out there. But there's eight to go. Avelino, seen her do that time and again this year. Just let the ball bounce along and protect it. It's a touch cheeky. It's legal. It's legal, but I'll tell you what. It's confidence, shall I say, then. You can only play the rules. Dynan shakes her head at the call for Maureen Boyle. Have you got a bit of time on your hands? Why is that? If this runs it down, we're looking at a minute's break and then two seven-minute halves and then perhaps extra time from there. Cusack puts the Blues up. By one. Avellino playing a sensible game then, just waiting, knowing the defenders would be anxious to get good position. Oh, and she's first to the ball. Ellis chased it hard but gave away the contact. I think she thought it was going to go the other way. She was ready to charge and attack. <laughs> Avellino again. 34 all. Dalwood centre pass. Finnan. Cusack. And Dynan drawing a fair bit of whistle in her short time on court so far. Cusack needs this to go. Filky touching the arm of Cusack in the shot. Ball ace. And the contact against Avellino. Important turnover here. Finnan, can New South Wales protect it and convert it? Wing attack. Against Abbott. Oh, gee, there's a lot of whistle in this last quarter. A sign of the desperation and maybe some tired legs. Contacting centre, top of the circle. Oh, Wag went up too early. Cusack did well to keep it in. Oh, nice play. Lovely turn. Harvey making the difference then, encouraging the players to settle and drive on the ball.
New South Wales with a slight edge in that once South Australia score, it's going to a New South Wales centre. So South Australia drawing level. Too much on it from Cusack, but she hauls in the rebound. Great positioning. The timing was good. Just under five minutes to go. New South Wales by one. It was one the difference last year in Darwin. New South Wales won that. Four lays to equalise once more. Cool heads needed out there in the last four and a half minutes. And unlike earlier periods of the game, there's almost inevitability with the shots now. You feel quite confident that once it's down there, it's going through. Oh, nice Cusack, move. open. It's a miss. It's off. Wag has it. Well, the South Australian defenders would be uh, disappointed in themselves for not punching up on that rebound. Here's a second chance. And their timing was there then, but they virtually fought each other for it. And a penalty. No right. throw in. Shouldn't have watched Harvey's face. <laughs> oh, gee, Cusack was open at the post again. Murphy's pass for a, just a touch on it from the South Australian defence, and that was an important touch. New South Wales making hard work of this, and Harvey up there, the backup from Filkey. Here's a chance for the break for South Australia. They hit the lead for the first time in this last quarter. No, Dalwood. Dalwood great work. Wag. Danny, Waits for the backup. Danny Grant stopping on the take. Contact. Wag will take the shot. Oh, oh. it's way off. <laughs> and the contact against Harvey, not just out of play. So Cusack with the shot. Well, New South Wales have had a lot of chances to finish this one off. 3.20 to go. Finnan. Oh, no. Kalman's called against it. Yeah, push from the back. Too much on the challenge. Avellino, long bomb, no. Bernie just died. And she was confident that was through and she sat right back on the shot. New South Wales with a chance to take it out to two. And with 2.50 to go, that might be a comfort margin. Murphy. Wag. And what, what a low scoring game. Yes, it's unusual. 55-41 uh, it was when they met on Wednesday. They're certainly not going to get near 50, the winning side today. Good jump from Filky. She really held that up. It was close to three. Hand in the face, so intimidation. That's the two break. And it's a New South Wales centre pass. It, indeed it is. And I think that could be enough for New South. There's something wrong. They can't win it from here. Two minutes, ten to go. Good hands from Dalwood. South Australia need Wag to miss, but she doesn't. Should be enough. Grant takes it quickly. Abbott, Avellino. Grant, Borlais or... Borlais was open, but Grant was off balance. And that's it. They're celebrating down in the crowd. Four lays. 39-37. It's a New South Wales centre pass. Dalwood not hurrying back. Cusack. Contact. 1.20 to go. Contact outside. Cusack. Dalwood. And they're looking to play it around New South Wales. They don't need to hurry the shot if they can protect possession. They can protect the title that they've held for the last seven years. The New South Wales run with the title is the longest in the history of the Elix Shield. And before that, it was the Proud's Challenge Cup that started in 1926. New South Wales were the first winners. They've won it 13 times. South Australia, 28. But in recent years, since the late 80s and into the early 70s, it's been a New South Wales domination. Under a minute to go, New South Wales by three. And almost unbelievably, South Australia are going to be denied again when they've been the form team all week. But as they've often done in the past, come the final, New South Wales have found their combination. A step against Danny Grant.
and this is to be eight titles in a row the timekeeper gets up and Maureen Boyle stops the clock but there can only be less than 10 seconds to go wag 41 37 the crowd knows it's as good as over and that is it Well, I don't think uh, the New South Wales girls can believe it. They'll be pinching themselves for at least an hour. They must have believed in themselves before the match to produce the effort that they did. But now that they've done it, and they'll look back on a week when they were thrashed by South Australia 55-41 only three days ago, and they've turned that result on, it, on its head to defeat to South Australia. Your hearts go out to the South Australians who until today were undefeated. But New South Wales found it when it was needed and they win it 41-37. And congratulations to the New South Wales team, national champions for 1994. As Steve Rabilli had said, eight in a row. A fantastic effort, but you do have to feel for the South Australians. Denied a chance at taking the crown after really being the informed.